In this part of the June 2020 Camp Connection, we will look into the impact of COVID-19 on the industry around the globe. A time where many companies had to take a closer look into buy-side regulations. Something I will also discuss with Uge Koenigswald from ECA. But first we will connect with Jeff Schatz of Thermo Fisher Scientific in the USA. Hi Jeff, I hope all is well. Thank you, Cheer. And yes, things remain fairly normal here in my home office. But it certainly wouldn't be an understatement to say we've been pretty busy. Can you tell how COVID-19 is impacting a global company like Thermo Fisher Scientific? Thermo Fisher Scientific has been on the literal front lines of this pandemic since the outbreak in Wuhan, China was first announced. Our equipment and molecular biology products are being used around the world to characterize and sequence the novel coronavirus, as well as diagnose COVID-19. We are also supplying critical raw materials to companies who are developing their own molecular and serological tests, as well as vaccines and treatments. Needless to say, our R&D colleagues have been hard at work developing new products and our manufacturing teams have been scaling their oper operations. And this is all being done while uh, juggling facility validations and gaining regulatory approvals. Essentially, we're all working together to build this airplane while, while still in the air. Any product stewardship challenges in this unique situation? Certainly. We've seen hundredfold increases in demand for some of our products. We are literally manufacturing millions of COVID diagnostic assays per week. And as you can imagine, this has forced some of our businesses to rapidly pivot to gain um, reach registration or increase their tonnage bands. Essentially, the demand was present before we could even file. Fortunately, ECA, along with the member state competent authorities, have been cooperative to help expedite the reviews so that we did not have to interrupt our supply chain. Any authorization issues linked with this? We've also seen new uses for products which are bringing them into the scope of Annex 14, which is creating some development challenges for some of our downstream users while emphasizing some of our own substitution priorities. And lastly, we've been putting hand sanitizers on the market in both the UK and the US. And in the UK, this is being done through an Article 55 derogation of the BPR, which had to be sorted and aligned with the UK Health Safety Executive. And they've been very helpful. And while classically a biocidal product in the, US, in the US, hand sanitizers are regulated under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act instead of FIFRA. And thankfully for all of us here in the US, the FDA has been quite proactive with issuing emergency policies that define the formulations and clearly specify facility requirements as well as product labeling. That said, we had to move from manufacturing hand sanitizers to interpreting the regulations and make hundreds of gallons available to our staff and eventually our customers, which is within a matter of a few weeks. Jeff, thank you very much. Thanks, Jared. Stay safe. Also in Europe, COVID-19 created an urgency to find solutions within the regulatory buy side framework to get disinfectants on the market and to consumers as soon as possible. We will connect with Uge Koenigswald of ECA in Helsinki and ask him what the biggest challenges and solutions for industry and member states are in the beginning of the roaring 20s of this century in relation to biocides. Hello, Tiat. Hello, everyone. Yes, indeed, it was a quite challenging times. Industry had to find ways of addressing the growing demand for, in particular, disinfectants. So, it was on one hand using new sources of supply for active substances, core formulant, packaging, uh, ensuring that they meet the technical requirements, having to adapt, at the same time having to comply with all the legal requirements and procedures for, for the uh, Barcelona product regulation, but also for the uh, CLP regulation. Uh, for other companies entering the market, it was, okay, how to market our products which are normally not authorized under the Barcelona products regulation with active substances not approved or not applied for. All of this in a quite complex regulatory situation because depending on uh, the active substance used in the product, uh, products had either to be uh, authorized under the Barcelona products regulation or under national law, for instance. Ethanol is not an approved active substance in uh, under the Basel product regulation yet, and therefore the national provisions apply. It's great to see how creative and solution-driven industry can be in these times of need. Were member state authorities able to keep up the pace and show a similar flexibility? Well, for member states, uh, it was quite difficult. Of course, overall they managed, but it was really uh, difficult times because there was not much time available uh, to assess uh, the situation 
At the same time, they really had to ensure that the products that we were uh, permitting to be on the market uh, to meet the demand uh, were sufficiently safe, sufficiently efficacious. And for that, uh, we provided some uh, guidance to the member states and also to industry uh, to ensure that there were recommended requirements uh, for the active substances used and some guidelines for assessing the efficacy. Uge, thank you for sharing the industry challenges and member state dilemmas in relation to biocides in the current COVID-19 time.